Windjammers 2 answers the question, what do you get when you combine air hockey with a 2D fighting game? The result, as it turns out, is an absolute blast to play. Changing very little from the original Windjammers that came out on the Neo Geo 27 years ago, the sequel is simple, sweat-inducing, and extremely addictive. Even though it lacks a few key features you'd expect from something designed to be so highly competitive in this day and age, and fumbles its attempt at telling any kind of a story, Windjammers 2 is a more than worthy successor to the retro classic that came before it. At a glance, Windjammers 2 looks to be little more than a game of Pong, and in a lot of ways, that's not far off. But this simple starting point is made a lot more complex by introducing an arsenal of diverse tactics and awesome mind games that draw heavily on the fighting game genre. Windjammers 2 remains incredibly loyal to the design of the 1994 original, with only a handful of gameplay tweaks, new characters, and improved graphics to distinguish it. It's impressive how well the old formula holds up a quarter of a century later, and the small additions are all solid improvements. The ability to jump in the air and spike the disc down into your opponent's court, for example, is particularly useful. The truly remarkable thing about Windjammers 2 is that any move made against you has a logical counter to it, so I never felt like I was the victim of unfair tactics or an exploit of some kind. If someone is staying back and defending their goal, you can use the drop shot to bunt the frisbee right over their goal and punish them for their babysitting. If someone makes a curve shot that veers just out of your reach, you can use your power toss to knock it into the air, giving you time to recover it and mount a counter attack. Instead of raging, losing a match just made me bow my head and consider how I could respond better next time, and that's the hallmark of a well-balanced meta. Almost as impressive is how Windjammers 2 manages to maintain much of its predecessor's art style, which makes use of hand-drawn characters and a top-down perspective that somehow still shows off a lot of each person. And this commitment to an old-school vibe certainly pays off with extremely expressive characters and over-the-top animations that made me feel like I was right in the middle of the action despite having a bird's-eye view. When it comes to gameplay improvements, the star of the show is the Super Meter, which charges up a little every time you throw the disc. When it's fully charged, you can unleash a powerful disc throw that moves quickly and can be difficult to predict, or you can use it to stop the disc in its tracks. That's useful for countering incoming attacks. What's your plan? What's my plan? There are also a few new characters that mix things up a bit, including Raposa, a skateboard-riding Brazilian kid who's the fastest-moving character available. The new characters have actually become some of my favorites, since their special abilities are usually more over-the-top and creative than the six characters from the original. Similarly, the new maps make you change up your tactics, like one particularly amusing stage where how many points you earn for each scored goal is randomly determined by a slot machine. Outside of actual gameplay, though, it's disappointing to see so few additions or updates have been made. The biggest example is the omission of a spectator mode or a training mode, features that are quite common in highly competitive games nowadays, and which would go a long way in supporting what is sure to be a passionate, competitive community. There's also no real tutorial. Another missed opportunity is that Windjammers 2 has only three game modes, Arcade, Versus, and Online, and all of those are essentially the same mode for different purposes. Arcade serves as a solo campaign of sorts, though it amounts to little more than a tournament-style series of bouts before a very short epilogue sequence for each character that often left me with more questions than answers. Why include a story mode at all if you aren't going to put any effort into it? Unless you're just trying to get some practice in against computer-controlled opponents, the juice really isn't worth the squeeze with Arcade Mode, and it's definitely the weakest of the bunch. Versus Mode gets straight to the point and lets you play one-off matches against computer players with custom rule sets, 
or local human friends and family that you trust not to throw you out the window when things get heated, because they very well might. Finally, there's the online mode, which allows you to finally play a game of anime frisbee with people from across the World Wide Web. It comes packaged with two match-made playlists, Quick Match and Ranked Match. The former, which just pits you against any available player, and the latter matches you against similarly skilled players and gives you a chance to climb up or down the ranking ladder with your victories or defeats. The online mode works well enough, but at least on the Nintendo Switch where I played, loading times can be a bit long and frankly, the online UI and overall experience is pretty clunky. That said, it works well enough to get the job done, and I experienced minimal input lag in the online games I played, so it's a good time. Windjammers 2 is a worthy sequel to a retro classic that manages to improve upon the highly competitive arena with new characters, levels, and abilities that make this fighting game version of Pong incredibly addictive. It lacks some key features, like a spectator mode or any kind of a tutorial to walk new players through all the complexities of combat, and makes a limp attempt at telling a story about its characters. But it's so much fun to play that it's easy to forgive those whiffs. For more competitive games, check out our reviews of Halo Infinite's multiplayer and Forza Horizon 5. And for everything else, stick with IGN.